Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. I wonder if you would stand to your feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. God has been so good, amen. Let's give him some praise. And right now, we're actually going to go in, and not only are we going to give him praise, but we're going to go ahead and begin to pray that the Lord would touch this service. If you would, would you join with me right now? Gracious Lord, we love you, God. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. God, we thank you for your love. Lord Jesus, we give you praise right now, God. You are greater, Lord, than anything in this world, God. Your presence right now, God, is greater, Lord, than anything we face this week. God, it's greater than any mountain. It's greater than any obstacle. God, we give you praise right now. Lord Jesus, if we've come in here, Lord, with a heavy heart, God, we repent of it right now, God. We repent of our sins. We repent of anything, God, that is keeping us from your presence, keeping us from your glory. God, you make all things new, Lord Jesus. And God, I thank you, Lord, that you are a healer. Lord God, I thank you that you are a redeemer. I thank you, Lord, that before we even speak the word, God, you know it all together, Lord Jesus. God, you say if we draw nigh unto you, you'll draw nigh unto us. Lord, we are a broken people, but a people that love you, Lord. And we stand on the promise, Lord, knowing that by ourselves we have nothing, that by ourselves we can't earn your blessing. Lord, but with you, all things are possible. Healing is possible. Restoration is possible, Lord. You provide for every need. So God, today, on this Sunday, we give you praise right now. We love you today. We honor you today. Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that we wouldn't leave the same way that we've come in, Lord but that today we would choose, Lord, choosing us this day whom we're going to serve, and that is going to be you, Lord. Because if you're not in it, Lord, none of it matters. So right now we're going to give you our best praise. We're going to give you everything that we have. We're going to pray knowing that we're not promised tomorrow, and we're going to worship all the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you clap your hands as unto the Lord? We're about to enter into a, a time of worship. And I encourage you, if you are able, to come down to the front and we're going to worship together. If you have a need, a special need in your body, in your life, the elders and the ministers will be here at the front to pray for you, just as the scripture says. So worship with them as they sing. Amen. Come on, the Lord is more than able. He can do exceedingly abundantly. Above all we ever ask or think. In Jesus' name, have your way today, Lord. God, you're more than able, Lord. Return to you, Lord, in all things. Have your way, Lord. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When did I start to forget all of the great things you did? When did I throw away faith for the impossible? How did I start to believe that you weren't sufficient for me? Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You do
today, Lord, to reach my heart, God, to touch our soul. God, have your way in this place, Lord. It's our prayer. Say, God is more than me. Come on, make that personal. God, you are more than able. You are more than able. testimony today. There's so much goodness and grace, much more than I deserve, because I know who I am. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you've got air in your lungs, lift up a praise unto the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord. He loves you. He cares for you in Jesus' name. If you need victory, if you need a blessing in your life, magnify the Lord and give him a praise today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, put your hands together for the Lord.
If you're coming in here with fear, with doubt, I want you to know that you can leave here victorious with the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Because with the Lord Jesus, all things are possible. Come on, you need a touch in your life. It's time for you to praise the King of Kings. Magnify him. Set him above all things. Hallelujah. In the end, you'll find yourself victorious in Jesus' name. through today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, I love you today. Come on, lift your voice and worship in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, he's worthy today. Come on, all of my fear. All of my fear I will turn it. time put your hands together for the Lord he is so faithful he is true when we magnify the Lord we can put it all to the side the cares of this world to the side and say Lord 
Have your way in my heart and in my life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for that hope and that victory in Jesus today? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Make your way back to your seats today. We've got a great uh, agenda today. Looking forward to all that the Lord is doing today. Brother Bill is going to make his way up. So very thankful for him and the ministry. The past two months we've been raising money in our Sunday school doing a change war. And uh, we've the young people have been giving change. There's dollars, all kinds of things that we were uh, raising money for. Pastors have given us a vision to do home missions and world missions. Missions is missions. There are, there are small churches right here in our state, and there's churches across the country that are small startups that need financial help and financial blessing. And I know that with the Lord Jesus. And these things that we, we keep it uh, in the front of our mind, we keep it right out in front of us that there are churches right here at home and abroad that need help. And we have our Sunday school class, and they've, they've been uh, made a little competition out of it. I've got a little trophy, actually, that he found. But it's so good to see that um, our young people and our kids and our church give towards missions right, home, right here at home and abroad. Amen? Amen. So glad to be a part of a church. That is so giving. So brother, brother Bill tallied all of the numbers, and he's going to bring that today and, and, and introduce who the winner was for this, for this competition. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. I found a new hobby, counting change. <laughs> uh, we, we, we had a lot of it. And first, I want to say thank you to everybody that uh, uh, participated in the change war this year. It's amazing what a quarter makes a difference. You know, we think a quarter, you know, or a penny. How many times we walk by a penny laying on the ground and like, yeah, I'm not going to bend down and get that, you know. But, you know, it just comes to show by doing this is that our change makes a big difference. Amen. Um, at the beginning of this, I, I told all the teachers and that there's two strategies to, to win this thing. One, you either... Load yours up with your change as much as you can. Or the other strategy would be to put dollar bills, which would count against the other teams. You put it in theirs, and it counts against their change. And they're, you know, you think about it. Well, I wonder which way is going to work the best. Well, one way definitely worked the best in, in this year's change war. So starting out, I'm going to go through this real quick. Uh, we had one class that really did good overall, unfortunately. But somebody took it out and says, ah, they need some dollar bills in theirs. And they ended up getting more dollar bills than they did change in their, for the, the competition. So they ended up in a negative, but overall they had $224 in theirs. In their, amen. And I did an average, all the other classes, we took the total attendance and divided it into the total amount of change that was left after you took the dollar bills out um, to, to get a fair average. So it didn't matter what size your class was, it all averages out. College and career ended up with 17 cents a person per day. Youth department ended up with 24 cents per day. Kindergarten had 32 cents per day. The adult class had 41 cents per day. The beginners had 64 cents per day. Boy, I know there's some people are just waiting right now. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been asked, who won, who won, who won? And uh, they were even this morning, they were asking my wife, who won, who won? And she says, I don't know. He won't tell me either. <laughs> so the edge class ended up with eight per student. Uh, student per, per week. The toddler class ended up with $1.73. So that leaves either the next step or the primary left. Two big competitors. I mean, they are tooth and nail. And uh, so our first runner up at $2.71 is a next step class. <laughs> Amen. Brother Brad, if, 
Brother Brad, you would have had 33 more dollars. $33 short. <laughs> so the winners this year is, is the primary class. Amen. And they ended up with $3.26. Amen. So if I would like for the teachers of the primary class to come up here. We uh, get someone to get our picture. But uh, one, one of their teachers on the very last day, the amount for the primary class was $3.26. Um, for, uh, for each one. Is Brianna here? Yep. Um, I'm going to tell you, Sister Faith here, she figured it out. On the last day, she calls me up. She says, Brother Bill? I said, yeah. She says, I need $100 in quarters. So this year, by contributing to your own, uh, Change War was the winner. Amen. Congratulations, you guys. I don't know who wants to take a picture here. Thank you all so very much. Thank you, that was awesome. Hey, Amen. Can we give them one more hand clap? How awesome is that? Man, God is so good. God is so good. Uh, just a few announcements as we get ready to prepare our offering. Fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred, just over fifteen hundred. The zeros matter. <laughs> just over fifteen hundred. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you again, Brother Bill, Sunday School staff. Thank you once again for all the hard work and to everybody that gave. Uh, these dollars are going to go far greater than anything you could buy with what you have on your own. Amen? God is good for that. Uh, just a few announcements. There's no announcements on this thing other than here. Let's go over here. Sorry. Uh, this Friday we have our Battle of the Sexes Express. Uh, what a great first week we had. Amen? We are excited for the second week of Battle of the Sexes Express. We've been being very real there, and it's been, uh, it's been pretty great uh, and definitely refreshing. Uh, somebody say prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is this week. So if you can, this is usually about the only time we say, hey, pull out your phones. But if you take notes on your phone, please write the schedule down if you can. This, uh, this week is prayer and fasting week here at Grace Apostolic Church. Uh, on Monday, the men will be meeting here for prayer at 7 o'clock. At 7 p.m., uh, men will be meeting here on Monday. On Tuesday, the women will be, leading, uh, will be meeting here at 7 o'clock again for prayer and uh, fast this, this week if you can. Thursday will be the leadership, and Saturday will be families. Amen. One more time, Monday men, Tuesday women, Thursday leadership. Saturday, families, and this Wednesday also is a journeyman's meeting Wednesday at 6 p.m., uh, and they're doing a great work. Uh, Brother Curtin, if he's in here, if he'd raise his hand. If he's not, uh, there's definitely going to be plenty of information 6 p.m. on Wednesday if you're a guy that wants to be part of that. Amen? Would you all stand with me? You know, praise is an incredible thing. Sometimes we praise by our voice. Sometimes we praise in the dance. Sometimes we praise in the way that we give. But there's something to keep in mind always, somewhere in the back of your mind, is that in the Old Testament, when they used to go to battle, they didn't put the strongest army out front. They didn't put the strongest warriors out front. But they put the tribe of Judah, and Judah simply means praise. And so when you're going through and you're facing something in your life, the thing you want to put first and foremost 
is your praise. Sometimes God will ask you to praise him with your voice. Sometimes he'll ask you to praise him with a song. Sometimes God will ask you to praise him in your giving. And that's what we're going to do today on this Missions Sunday. I, we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to touch our hearts because we're going to give him praise today. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, we love you and we thank you once again. God, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've blessed us with, everything that you've provided us with. God, we thank you for this country and the abundance, God, that you've given us, Lord. I pray today that you would bless this offering, God, on this Mission Sunday, God, that you would touch our hearts, God, that you would multiply this offering, God, to, to work in the kingdom, whether at home or abroad. Your name be praised in it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may follow the ushers as you march. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was When I met you, I was breathing, but not alive. Oh, all my failures I tried to hide. It was, it was my dream till I.
your hands together for the Lord today. He's worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Aren't you thankful to be in the presence of the Lord today? Amen, amen. We have our choir is going to be singing here. God is so good. We have our choir. You may be seated if you'd like. Um, we have our choir that sings uh, around Christmas time, and we sing at different times of the year for different events and different things. One thing that I love singing with is with our choir. I love singing, being up here, singing with um, all these wonderful people, singing and worshiping God together. I always feel like it's an army of people. It's the, we expand the army from a praise team to a choir, and then when we're all singing as a choir, we're all singing as a church, and begin to bless and glorify God. So anytime we can get our choir together to sing, we're looking to be much more consistent and faithful with our choir this coming year. God has been so good and so faithful. As we continue to follow after the Lord Jesus Christ and bless him and glorify his wonderful name, there is such a reassurance in my soul. I don't know how it is for you, but when I come into the house of God and I glorify God, the world can be a struggle at times and it can be really difficult going through trials and tribulations. But every time I come into the house of God, I'm reminded that I can trade my joy. I can trade my pain for joy. I can, I can come into this life and we talk about the grave and the grave just seems hopeless. But when you have Jesus Christ living on the inside of you, you know that there is hope even in that. I love Jesus Christ because he has been so faithful when I come in with sorrow and shame. I can leave victorious. I will bless the Lord at all times and I will magnify his name today. So if you've been going through it, let's bless the Lord some more. Let's glorify that wonderful name that's above every other name today in Jesus' name. Come on, let's bless him some more. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's go in Jesus' name. As I follow you, I know everything will be all right. As I come to you, I know you'll make everything all right. Come on. The weapon may be formed, I know that it will not prosper, no. Surrounded on all sides, my God has already won the fight.
you've been redeemed. You've been set free. Let the Lord touch your heart. Come on, you need a touch in your soul. Let the Lord reach right down and bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, I need victory in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. There is provision in the name of Jesus. There is restoration in the name of Jesus. There is no other name given among men under heaven by what we must be saved. What's that name? Jesus is that name. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, choir. Give them another hand clap of appreciation.
Amen, amen. I would just like to, at this time, uh, call up Brother Jesse, Brother Lincoln, who will be coming from the back, uh, Brother AJ as well. And while they're making their way to every guest that's here today, we'd just like to say thank you for being here at Grace Apostolic Church. We are a people that love God. And we'd love for you to know more about the church. We have a gift in the lobby just to say thank you for being here. Again, we are here for you, and we love that you have joined us today. Uh, at this time, I, I saw Brother Jesse over here somewhere. Brother Jesse, would you like to come on up? Actually, all three of you guys can come on up. We're going to hear about, so we had the privilege of going to Africa for the very first ever National Youth Convention for the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ in Zimbabwe. What a remarkable time. We're excited to tell you about it. Uh, we're going to have them actually all testify about it, and then we'll go into the Word of God. Amen? Amen. All right, praise the Lord, church. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to clarify that me and Brother AJ did not plan on matching today. <laughs> completely head to toe, so that was completely unintentional. Um, I just want to start off by saying a huge thank you to this entire church. This trip would not have been made possible without every single one of you, from my family to everybody who gave financially, who gave in prayers. Everything helped, and it was an amazing, absolutely life-changing opportunity to go. To go with these men right here, it was, I would not go with a better, could not go with a better group than these men. Uh, Pastor Ramsey, he preached on Thursday night, spoke twice on Friday, preached on Sunday. Brother AJ did once on Friday, twice on Saturday, and preached Sunday. Brother Lincoln spoke twice. They were, had their plates full from the entire time we were there, but it was a complete honor being there with them, watching them minister to the people in Zimbabwe. It was an incredible experience. I will say they do value praise there. They very, very much value praise. And as much as I value praise, as much they praise a little differently than I do. They have a lot of, uh, of dancing. I'm not much of a, like, I have no rhythm in me whatsoever, so, but they do, and we're there, we're trying to do everything that they're doing, we're trying to follow them, like, dance with their, I'm not going to dance, because I can't, it's going to be embarrassing, but it was an amazing opportunity, and if I had the opportunity to go back right now, this second, I absolutely would, and I feel like I can speak on behalf of all of them, it was an amazing opportunity, and I'm excited for what's to come in Zimbabwe, it's very evident that God is moving over there, it's, it was my first time out of the country, I've never left America, and then all of a sudden, I'm going 8,000 miles away to Zimbabwe. So it was kind of incredible seeing how moving that far away, God's still moving just as much there as he is here. It's very evident that God is moving in Zimbabwe, and I'm very excited to see what's to come in the future for the Zimbabwe. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. All right. Before, I, don't, I, don't, he, I thought Justin's going to do it. Okay, I'll do it. It's a little test. So every service, pretty much they open up. They do everything in threes. Like, so um, I'm going to say God is good. Everybody in here is going to say all the time, okay? God is good. All the time. All right, second part. All the time, God is good. There you go. And then you say, you point yourself like this, you say, especially to me. All right, we're going to do it. Okay, we're going to do it. All right. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Especially to me. There you go. They got it. They got it. Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you to this entire congregation for your prayers um, and giving financially. Um, I couldn't be any more blessed to have gone on this trip, and especially with the people that I got to go on. It was one of the, it, it was life-changing. It was, it, I don't really know how else to say it. It was awesome. It was life-changing. It was hilarious. We're, we're all, we're all pretty, we are all sleep-deprived the whole time, so everything was, like, so much funnier. Um, but again, I just want to say thank you so much. I want to say thank you to everyone who gave financially, and every, every person in this building who has prayed for our safety and for our protection. Um, I can't wait to bring back their spirit of praise and worship back to this church, and I can't wait to see what God's going to do over there as well as here. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. What an honor and a privilege it was to go to um, across the world to Zimbabwe for the first ever ALJC Youth Conference. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, every moment of it, and uh, I'd like to just start, before I say anything else, by thanking you for your support and your prayers uh, for allowing us the opportunity to go, because it was absolutely life-changing, as they said. It was incredible. 
and I wouldn't have wanted to do it with anybody else, but these three young men absolutely ministered their hearts out, and the Lord moved in a mighty way in Zimbabwe. Amen. Amen. I will say, I, I believe we bless the church and we bless the people of Zimbabwe, but I also believe that they blessed us just as much. And uh, they truly showed us what humility and servanthood looked like. You see, when they came into the church, there was no drama, there was no conflict, there was no hierarchy, but they were just glad to be found in the house of the Lord, serving the kingdom of God. So I'm, I plan to take that with me for the rest of my life and use it everywhere I go. So I'm just thankful for the opportunity, thankful that I was able to go. So once again, thank you, church, and God bless. Amen. I also echo their sentiments. Thank you once again to each and every one of you in this church that has given. Um, I will tell you right now, um, I have never seen somebody eat as much as Jay Lee. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> it was like the second day we were all dehydrated and hungry and just, you know, ready for something. And I just looked over and I saw Brother Jesse over here with a double-decker pizza. I think one or two bottles of water, a Coke, and a strawberry milkshake that he said tasted like Pepto-Bismol. And all of that only cost $7 U.S. Just to keep in mind just how powerful our dollar was. He was hurting. Um, we have to pray for him, make sure he continues to take his malaria pills because he kept forgetting over there. It was wild. It was really wild. And uh, Pastor Murray, if you're watching, all I could say, this is what he'd say all the time. He'd say, my way, iwe, yo way, all the time. He was hilarious. What a, we couldn't have asked, again, for a better group, not only from us coming from the U.S., but even Pastor and Sister Murray. What a heart that they have for the nation of Zimbabwe. They are they're salt of the earth people, just absolutely incredible. Now, um, Brother Bill, what was the goal for our Sunday school? We were trying to get to, was it 2,000? And what did we hit? He has no idea what I'm about to talk about right now. There's, can you uh, show the picture that we have? In Africa, this is in Zimbabwe. This is a church in Zimbabwe right here. And if I were to stand at that red door, my head would be hitting the ceiling. And in Zimbabwe, when you are building a church, you go to the, the city or the council, and they'll say, they'll give you the land for free. They'll give you the land for free. They just say, hey, make sure you build on it. You got to follow this code. Now, this church in Zimbabwe is actually one of the nicest churches within a 25-mile radius. Over 200 people go there every single Sunday. Well, there was a need that was presented. Nothing was ever asked of us. Nothing had, they weren't saying, hey, can you guys give to this? But they said that they needed to get 50 bags of cement to raise the ceiling and to put footings around the ditches that you'll see right there, to put footings there. And I thank God that we've learned in Sunday school, that we've learned in this church that God loves a cheerful giver. And as a group of young men here, they needed 50 bags at $10 a piece, and us young men here came up with the $500 to meet the need. <laughs> Brother Bill, we hit our goal. We hit 2,000 for missions. Amen. They said, we want to put your name on the wall. We want to put your name on the wall. And instead of them putting any of our names on the wall, you know what we said? I want you to put Life Group, Grace Apostolic Church in Clawson, Michigan, on the brick that they have over there. That they know that there is a, a city in the United States of America that has invested into the nation of Zimbabwe that is one body in Christ, regardless of where we're at. And I thank God for that today. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for the opportunity. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. What a blessing uh, it is for us to have, <clears throat> be able to send young people and people from this church to other countries to minister the, the gospel there. What a blessing it is. I do have a... Um, Quick, while they're coming back on their way home, uh, Brother Murray uh, sent me a, a quick text. He said, greetings in Jesus' name, Brother Traxel. 
Hope all is well, just giving you feedback. We in Zimbabwe were very honored to have such a well-rounded and anointed group that came over and ministered here in Zimbabwe. Wow, thank you very much for having them come. This was probably the best group I have had a chance to have come and help. They were simply number one. Hopefully they will be back next year. You can be very proud of all of them. God bless richly. Have a blessed and wonderful day in Jesus. Amen. Isn't that great to hear from your young men at your church? Amen. Amen. If there's anything we don't want to be stingy about, that is raising offerings to get our people over to other countries. To experience that, what a great blessing it is for them, but what, what, what an empowerment it puts into their spirit when they come back home. Amen. I want to give our, our people a chance to experience that because that makes Grace Episodic Church better. So when we make those appeals and we'd raise money, please open up your pockets and help these people go to these trips because it's a blessing to them. Amen. There's a lot of things we, we throw our money away for so many things that don't ever matter. Some people have outfits and clothing in their, in their uh, closet. They still have the tags on. Never even wore them. And so we know we just have money. We go through it easily. But, man, what a, what a blessing it is when we can tie our finances into the kingdom of God by helping people, amen, doing things across our world. We're standing for the reading of the word, Mark chapter 3. <clears throat> I have a word of the Lord. I do know it's 1218. I'm normally up preaching by about a little after 12. So if you just bear with me a few, few minutes, I have a message I want to bring forth to you. And uh, hopefully you won't look at your watch and wonder what time it is. Uh, we've just been here an hour. It doesn't seem like we've got a lot done in an hour. Amen. It doesn't feel good to be here. Amen. Amen. We have, there, there's, they have movies now coming out for three hours. And they're like, man, I wish it was a little bit longer. Well, man, uh, this is better than any movie you'll see. Amen. Mark chapter 3, verse number 13. <clears throat> I do want to say, if, if you have never been baptized in Jesus' name, what a wonderful day. <laughs> it is to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. When the people in Acts chapter 2 want to know how to get saved or how to get away from their sins or how to turn to Jesus, Peter said, first you've got to repent of your sins. Then you must be water baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of those sins. It's not enough just to feel forgiveness or sorry for your sins. Now you've got to wash those sins away. And the only way you can do that is in the name of Jesus Christ and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's a part of the new birth process, to be washed of your sins in Jesus' name and to be filled with his wonderful spirit. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Amen. I'm so glad that I've had that experience. Amen. You come to an apostolic church, we'll baptize you any Sunday. Anytime you come to the house, we'll bapt we don't have a, a, a baptismal Sunday. We do it anytime you want to be baptized. We know that's how important it is that someone gets baptized in Jesus' name. And he goeth up into the mountain, verse 13, and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him, that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Gave them power to cast out devils, power to heal sicknesses. Isn't it wonderful to work for Jesus? All these wonderful things. But before he gave them the power to do so, he first had to spend time with them. He first had to spend some time with them. We better be very careful that we don't get lost in the dramatics of ministry, that we don't understand where the power comes from. It only comes from being in the presence of Jesus. It's not about how charismatic we can be, how great our programs are. That's not what changes the hearts of people. We must make sure that we're doing what we're doing properly by being in the presence of Jesus Christ. From there flows everything that we'll ever do that makes a difference in God's kingdom. I want to talk to you for a little bit on the subject proximity before power. Proximity before power. Everyone say amen to the reading of the word. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's important that we understand today the order in which we must align ourselves if we want to be successful ministers for the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. Ministry is for all of us. So this message is for all of us today because all of us are responsible for ministry. The past several weeks, uh, during Wednesdays, I've been speaking on a series of practical church growth. I've been talking about how that we're growing as a church. I, you know, um, this doesn't always mean people in the seats per se, but the mindset of the church, the strength of the church, the vision that's being carried by 
the church. Growth happens uh, when we begin to think alike and share in common goals and strategies to win our world. The church begins to move in the right direction. One person's not going this way and one person going that way, but we're all moving uh, simultaneously in the right direction where Jesus wants us to go. Some time ago, I was talking to Sister Faith Truba, and she's like, man, the church is different from when I got back from IBC. And I was like, what, what do you think, it, what, what is it? What do you think it is? And she goes, it's, a, it's, it's, like it's awake and it's alive. There's things happening at, at Grace Apostolic Church. And there's an obvious positive feeling uh, here at Grace. I'm very happy for it. Uh, you know, but, but now is not the time. Because we're here or getting to a good place, does not mean we set the cruise control and say, we'll just cruise until Jesus gets back. But rather, in those moments, we want to put uh, our foot on the accelerator even more because we know the day is approaching when Jesus Christ is coming back. Brother Jeff Clee talked about doing, a, doing an all-night prayer meeting on a Friday or something. Let, let's go do that. Let's, we, we, there's a lot of things we talk about wanting to do, but, man, those are the things that make an impact for the kingdom of God. This week during prayer and fasting, find a time to fast. Get, if you fast a meal, fast two meals. If you fast a day, fast two days. Let's challenge ourselves. Why? Because we want to continue moving in the momentum that the Holy Ghost has given us to move. And it's not about us. It's not about what we can devise in our own mind. We must be driven and led by the Spirit of Jesus Christ to reach people for Jesus. We must be following after the Spirit of God. And so I've been talking about practical ways of, of reaching people uh, for Jesus, and I've been using different illustrations. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I talked about meals and mission, how the Lord uses meals to reach people. I talked about living and teaching and doing all these practical things, and these are well and good. It's good to have a mindset. It's good to have a plan on what I'm going to do to reach somebody. If you never have a plan, if you never pray, Lord, lead me to somebody, you'll never find anybody. Because you never think about it. Soul winners uh, prioritize their thoughts that I, every conversation I have, every opportunity I have to tell someone, I'm going to find someone to tell about Jesus Christ. That's what you do. And so we have to have ideas. We have to have plans in place. That's all well and good. However, it is important that in all that we do, all that gets our focus and our time and our energy, that we do not lose focus on the main thing, which is simply Jesus Christ. Some time ago I preached, uh, and I, I was talking about two sons or two brothers, whatever, whichever, I didn't even figure out the title of that message, but I talked about two sons and two brothers there in the father's house. I talked about how the prodigal brother was lost in the field. He was working for the father, but he was lost there in the house. We hear about burnout in ministry. We hear about people quitting right when uh, things are get going great, when things are happening and uh, God's doing, it seems like God's doing things. And uh, possibly some of the reasons that people experience burnout is because uh, our priorities are out of line. Sometimes if we're not careful, we become us-reliant as opposed to being God-reliant. Trust me, the anointing of God can do way more than your hours of studying to say something good for the people. The anointing, you can be, as, as Mark Hamby said, you can be cross-eyed, tongue-tied, can't preach a lick, but if you got the anointing of God, it will change the hearts of of people. How does that happen when we keep Jesus the priority of everything we do? Wayne Cordero, the author, found himself paralyzed by burnout. He had been in ministry for 30 years, and 10 years after founding what is now the largest church in Hawaii, he found himself depleted. Wayne took a season out of his growing ministry to recharge and refocus on what was uh, truly important. He got back in proper balance and recharged his spirit through Jesus. And from this, he wrote his book, Leading on Empty. Can I tell you, this situation, this burnout, happens more often than it should on all levels of ministry. And that's why today what I'm preaching on, speaking on, is so important because the focus is on us. 
Now, you'll hear a lot of times I'll preach from this pulpit. we got to reach souls, reach souls. So we're always other people focused. We should be. We, we, for a good majority, we're other people focused. Who can I reach? Who can I lo- love on? Who can I save? Who can I reach for for Jesus Christ? But the focus today is for us, those of us working for Jesus, those of us that are in the field reaching for souls, those of us that are laboring in the vineyard. We had better stop and find out where we are in proximity to Jesus Christ. The problem with Samson is he had so much victory through the power of God that even when Jesus was not with him, he shook himself and said, I will go out like other times, not knowing that the Spirit of God was no longer with him. Let us not be a church that gathers on Sunday and say, hey, we'll have good church just like at other times and not realize uh, the Lord never even showed up uh, when we came together. Oh, God, uh, let us always look to find uh, where is Jesus? Let us always find him in a prayer room of dedication. We've got to have God's spirit with everything that we do. Because if we're not careful to listen to the voice of God, we will start listening and caring more about what people say and think more than what Jesus is speaking to the church. In Mark chapter 3, I read to you Jesus calling his disciples, and he gives them power to work great miracles. He sends them out to pray, and demons would tremble. He'd pray, and sicknesses would flee. And let me say, there are many exciting times for these young men. This is a great, powerful move that these Ordinary young men were experiencing and given power to see that the dead religion of their day had no idea about. Pharisees and Sadducees had no idea what it's like to pray in Jesus' name and cast out devils. The religious order was dead and dying, but the Lord restores power by giving these disciples uh, power and authority over all these evil spirits. In fact, in Luke chapter 10, Verse number 17, the disciples returned with joy, saying to Jesus that even the devils are subject to us in your name. There are some exciting things that God allows us to see when we call on the name of Jesus. I'm glad to know that devils still run when we call on the name of Jesus. I love the fact that we have two men that I have personally seen with my own eyes that God absolutely did a miracle in their life that could only have been done through the name of Jesus. Listen, I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what you're facing. But I'm telling you, there's a power here. There's a name that you can call on. The devil still tremble. Sickness can be healed only by the name of Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus steps his foot onto the land of the Gadarenes. And I don't know how long he was there for. I don't know how long he was bound. I don't know how long the devils had taken over his body. But the Bible says when Jesus stepped foot on that land, there was a man there full of, they said, 6,000 devils. He said, what's your name? My name is Legion. Legion of uh, soldiers could be anywhere from two to 6,000 uh, troops in a, in a legion of soldiers. So that man could have had about 6,000 devils uh, in his body. People couldn't uh, hold him down with chains or fetters. Uh, he broke those things, could not, could not uh, just be uh, overcome by man. He was a wild man. But the Bible says there was such power in the foot of Jesus uh, that the Bible says that man full of devils, uh, when he saw Jesus, Jesus far off ran and began to worship him. You want to know what that tells me? Listen, if 6,000 devils can't stop one man from worshiping Jesus, I'm telling you there's nothing that you're going through right now that can keep you from worshiping Jesus. Why? There's power. 
There's power in worship. There's power in praise. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. It's exciting to see the power. It's exciting to see the miraculous. However, it is very important that we don't miss this brief moment, this sentence that could be lost in the grand scheme of things. The moment scripture reading that mentions the purpose of Jesus that precedes the power of Jesus. He's in a mountain place where he ordains 12 disciples. What for? To be with him. That is probably the shortest part of our day because they're out doing all this work, but before they do, he just wants to be with them. He wants to have them in close proximity to where he is. And I'm going to say in our busyness, oftentimes that portion of our time with Jesus is the shortest part of our day. It's while we're getting cereal. Lord Jesus, remember my day today. Help me, Lord, while I'm getting milk and all okay. I've done it. Pastor, you, yeah, I've, I've done that. I've had those prayers. And so we put those short moments. But the Bible said he, he brought them to him to be with him. And then he sent them forth to preach and make proclamations of God, the gospel. He calls us first. Not, any, any person that wants to get involved in ministry has got to understand this message. He calls us first to be with him before we work for him. We can never get so good in what we do for God that we can bypass the time that we spend with God. Luke chapter 10, you'll hear a story, and I'm not going to read the whole story for time's sake. But verses 38 through 42, we'll find there a situation where Jesus goes to the house of Mary and Martha. And Jesus is there, and he's teaching in a room, wherever that was. And Martha's so excited about having Jesus, she wants to make sure everything's right. We had a great dinner last night. We had a great, man, we had a great dinner uh, for a lot of our volunteers, beautiful set, uh, uh, setting. Martha would have done that. Martha had a great eye. I'm not talking the ladies that did that or Martha's here. But I said, Martha would have loved that portion. She would have loved to make everything nice. And we need that. We want to do everything with excellency. Right? As long as, every, as, long as our excellency has a place. Everything's got to have a place and priority. The excellency of what you do is not more greater than the priority of being with Jesus. So here we are. Jesus is pouring out the word of God. The word of God is speaking the word of God. What's that like? And the Word of God is speaking the Word of God in this house. And Martha, the Bible says Martha's all cumbered about in the kitchen, man, getting things together. And here her sister is at the feet of Jesus, listening as he's pouring out revelation, whatever he is. And she's just eating it up, man. She's not thinking about setting the table. She's not thinking about making sure that the, that the floor is vacuumed. She's, none of that. Because Jesus is in the house, and while he's in the house, she's at his feet. Well, Martha, she's got ten trays. She's trying to get everything together. She's not hearing the word. She's not, she's not where Jesus is, but she's doing things for Jesus. It's all about she's working hard and she's doing her, it's her ministry, right? She's doing all the good things. She's doing it for him, but she's missing her moment at his feet. She gets so upset. She's like, time out. She's got to stop here a second. Would you tell my sister that she's got to come and be, be help me in the kitchen? Be all she's doing, she's, she's not helping me at all. She's by her feet. And the Lord says, you're, you're you're so encumbered by a lot of things, but Mary has chosen that which is good and it shall not depart from her. You're missing the moment. You're so busy doing things for God that you're missing the moment with God. See, and this is what you have to understand. The problem Martha had, Martha thought preparing pot roast was just as important as being in the presence of Jesus. Pot roast in the kitchen taking care of that is just as important as being at his feet. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing in this church there's no job. I don't care if it's behind this pulpit. I don't care if it's preaching a message. I don't care if it's teaching in a Sunday school classroom. I don't care what your job in the church is. There's nothing more important in the kitchen that can replace being at the feet of, listen, do not miss an opportunity to be in praise and worship with the church because you got something else going on. Listen, you better find your, 
You better find your way into the presence of Jesus because that's the most important thing you can do with your time. I went to Indiana Bible College, so I'm something. Look at me, I went to IBC. It was way better than CLC. <laughs> I'm not going to look the other way. You know, in Bible school, they help teach these young, fledgling ministers how to do things. Uh, we had a topical preaching class with Brother O.C. Marler. And... Uh, we learned how to open a sermon, how to build an idea, and then we learned how to close a sermon. Some preachers still don't learn that part yet. It's like you've been doing this for 30 years, you still can't close a sermon? You just keep on talking, just stop now. You're, just, you're, done, you're done good, you're done good. We learned how to build structure, how to say things, tell stories. We learned about sent, sentence structure, the ideas of preparation. But also while we're doing that and we're refining ourselves, also down in the boys' dorm where I stayed, at the end of the hall, there was a prayer room there. And I will tell you that I received more from the prayer room than I ever did in my topical preaching classroom. Because proximity to Jesus dictates the power from Jesus. So before we desire to preach behind a pulpit or teach in a classroom or minister for the Lord, we had better find a prayer room so that first we can be with the Lord and allow his power and his anointing and his influence to change everything that we do for him and people. We spent a lot of time speaking about God wanting to pour out revival. God wants to save souls, and yet it seems like we're always saying he wants to, he wants to, he wants to. So when will he? When will we actually give me the day? Give me the moment. Tell me right now. We find in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, we find the answer to revival now. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Revival happens when God's people will humble ourselves and draw close to him with prayer. Let me tell you something. If we're going to be an active church, let us actively pursue his presence. Because this world doesn't need another program. This world doesn't need our ideas. This world needs a church that has been in the presence of Jesus Christ. Because our proximity to Jesus is everything. Seven sons of Sceva learned this real quickly in Acts chapter 19, 13 through 16. They learned very quickly that trying to do God things without a God relationship will do more damage than good. Vagabond Jews, priests thought, we'll take care of this devil ourselves. The Bible says, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Come out of that man. The devil's like, I know Paul. I know Jesus. But who are you? What's more scary than the devil saying that is when we open up our mouth and pray to God and God says, who are you? If the devils don't know you, that's pretty bad. But if God doesn't know you, depart from me for I. But I was at church all the time, but you never spent time with me. I, how, how is it possible that all of our life we can do God things and God at the end, we're standing there, I can't wait, but God says, depart, I never even, you never even talked to me, I never had a relationship, you were never even in proximity of where I was. And somehow you were okay living like that your whole life. The Bible says these righteous, whatever they were, 
vagabond, whatever that meant for them. I pray in the name that Paul preaches, coming out of the man. And the Bible says the man full of devils left on them, and they were left wounded and naked. Tore their clothes on, man, it was a terrible thing. They learn it's not enough to say the right words. It's not enough to preach the right sermons or do the right things. You've got to have a relationship. Listen, I don't care if you're uneducated. I don't care what kind of degree you have. I'm telling you, there's nothing that can replace time spent with Jesus. That makes the difference with everything that we do. I'm getting ready to close here. Put that story of these seven sons of Sceva in with Acts chapter uh, number three. We find that uh, Peter and John go to the hour of prayer and uh, they see a man that's been there laid uh, 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 at the gate called Beautiful from the time he was born and he, he expects them to give him some money and Peter says, silver and gold have I none but such as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We know the story. Rise up and walk, and immediately his ankle bones receive strength. He gets up there and starts praising God. What an awesome story. What a great time. What a great miracle. And so they start questioning Peter and John. With what authority do you do this? Then we know the story of this man, but what good deed are we examined? By the name of Jesus, whom we persecute, this man stands whole before you. And then he says, neither is there salvation. We know he not only heals our body, but he saves our soul in the name of Jesus. And it's interesting what they recognize, verse number 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Do not get caught up in trying to Earn whatever you think, man, and applaud. Oh, look how many, look what he's done. Look at the, how smart he, look at all those things. Listen, none of that. The Lord is going to bring uh, the wisdom of, of this world to naught. Nothing's going to stand in the wisdom of God, but there's nothing. Huh? Like someone doesn't know a whole lot. Lord, I don't know a whole lot, but I just want to love on you for a minute, Lord. I don't know a whole lot. I don't know a whole lot of scripture, but God, I just want you to pour out your spirit on me. I'm telling you, there's nothing more impressive huh, in any ministry that and someone that has spent time with Jesus. They were ignorant. They didn't have the same things that all these pious Jews had. They were ignorant and unlearned. They were just fishermen. But because they'd been with Jesus, power was there. If you're tired of just getting by, if you're tired of just uh, living mediocre with God, I'm telling you, you find a place again. Uh, find a place of prayer. Find a place of separation. Get rid of your phone. Get rid of distraction. And just say, Lord, not for miracles. Uh, Lord, not for something great. Just that I might be in your presence, God. That makes a difference. Can we all stand to our feet today? I hope you log this somewhere in your spirit, what I'm saying today. Yes, we have to have a church staff. I get it. But I want staff members that even if they didn't have a position, it's that position that drives them. It's because they've been with Jesus and their heart is so heavy to win souls. They don't tell pastor, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I need to do. It's pastor, wherever I can be used, I want to just win a soul. Why? Because I've been listening to the heartbeat of Jesus. And he's driving me. He's separating me. I just want to spend time with Jesus. And when you spend time with Jesus, you start loving the things that Jesus loves. You can't just walk among people like ordinary. You see, heart, you see souls that are lost and you... It just drives you. Finally, go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet. With twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. 
and the house was filled with smoke. Isaiah gives six woes to the people that he's preaching to. Woe unto them. Woe unto them. Woe unto them. He'd already been preaching for a little while. This is a court preacher. This is a prophet. This is a man of God that probably spoke more about Christ in his writings than any other prophet in the Bible. This man right here. He's already got some time. He's been preaching. You better get right. Woe unto you. You better get right. You're going to be lost. Isaiah chapter 1. Just a beautiful revelation of just having a heart for God. He pours all this out. Woe unto them. But the most important woe that Isaiah would ever speak is the one that we find in chapter 6. That when Isaiah, after woeing to everybody else, gets in the presence of God, and he responds and says, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, He laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sins purged. Also, after I was in his presence, after I saw him, after I experienced his glory, he then hears a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Before we can ever be sent from God, we have to first stand in the presence of God that we may hear his voice with direction, asking, I'm looking for someone that's willing to go, someone to start a Bible study, someone to do a P7, someone to start something that can reach souls, but we don't hear the voice. Why? Because we don't spend time in proximity to him to see his glory I was called, I remember feeling the call of God in my life, 12, 13 years old. Had no idea what to do with it. Had no idea where I was going. Had no idea. I was graduating high school. I said, there's no way I'm going to Bible school. That place is a dump. No no offense to anybody watching that. It's gotten a lot better since then. I'm just trying, I'm trying to find somewhere I ended up going. I didn't know what to do with my life. I'm just gonna. But I do remember in the early years, before I knew direction, before I had a calendar on my wall with a bunch of engagements and dates and things I got to keep track of now that I'm older. Before all that junk. It's junk if God's not in it. I remember just being by my bed saying, God, I don't know what to do. I just want you, Lord. I just want to be used. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know to pray. But God, I simply want you. And God was kind to me. And he poured out his spirit upon me. I'm so thankful he did. But listen, you can't have anything in God's kingdom if you can't find time. Because we're so busy that we put in the last 15 minutes of our day that we don't give God the time because he is asking a question. Who will go? Who can we send? And simply the only way you're going to hear the voice and go is if you spent time in proximity close to his presence. This church knows what it's like to pray. You know how it is to worship. And so today these altars are going to be open. But I want to know, there's someone willing to come say, Lord, I've shrugged this off long enough. Lord, I've been so busy. But God, I come making a declaration to you, Lord, that God, I just want to be close to your presence. Can we do that today? Can we come to this altar? If you want to come and feel him for the first time, you can come and raise your hands. Let him touch you today. Lord, God, I just want to be close to you, God. It's not about my talents. It's not about my abilities, Lord. It's not about how well I can speak. Lord, it's all about your breath. Oh, I need you, Jesus. Lord, I want to be close to you, Jesus. Come on, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my time. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus.
the doors fling I see glory and I run inside the throne room before you I bow I bow the very 